Welcome back to Whence Came You, a Masonic podcast featuring research papers and discussions related to Freemasonry. Here's your host, Brother Robert Johnson. This is episode 291. Welcome back to the show. Just want to say thanks to everybody continuing to come back and listen every week. Those people who are sharing our episodes out on YouTube and sharing them on Facebook and Twitter and all over social media. Thanks so much for spreading Masonic education or Masonic light as we tend to call it. In the news this week, I uh, just wanted to cover a couple things. I'm not sure about everybody else, but I got my new list of lodges 2017. Pentagraph Publishing just released uh, the new list of lodges Masonic. Great book. I still wish it was PDF, but thanks to Pentagraph Publishing for doing all that hard work and compiling all that information. The United Grand Lodge of England, of course, celebrating the 300 years of Freemasonry and of course we're doing our thing here in June I'll talk about that a little later on but they are promoting uh, on their website Inside the Freemasons a Sky One documentary we've been talking about this forever not on the show but generally on social media they do have some information here it says the first episode of the forthcoming Sky One documentary series Inside the Freemasons will air on the 17th of April at 8 p.m. it says Emporium Productions who were commissioned by Sky to produce the series have this to say on their website quote welcome to one of the oldest social networking organizations in the world a fraternal order that welcomes members regardless of their status creed or political persuasion freemasonry with unique and unprecedented access to the freemasons inside the freemasons asks who are freemasons and what do they do as the united grand lodge of england celebrates its tercentenary in 2017 we go beyond the myth and legend to discover what it means to be a freemason today through the words and lives of freemasons themselves while most of us are familiar with the concept of freemasons few can describe who they are and what they do with any confidence or accuracy what has motivated generations of men to join its ranks what does the symbolism mean how does public perception differ to reality and what does freemasonry have to offer men and society in the 21st century end quote so kind of looks cool i imagine that at some point we'll figure out a way to hack this and get it in the united states and watch it online somewhere and when it does of course we'll throw some links up but it sounds interesting i don't think they're going to be revealing anything although the openness the perpetuation of a not a secret society but a society with secrets all that kind of stuff the things that I believe the fraternity has used for years to dodge bullets. I think those things are really just not true. We we are a secret society and that we do have secrets and people who say that there are no secrets in masonry and that's the secret. I mean, they missed the boat and I think that is dangerous. But this Inside the Freemasons Sky One documentary does sound weird. I had to laugh a little bit at the, the quoting in here. Who are the Freemasons and what do they do? I just thought of Kindergarten Cop. Who is your daddy and what does he do? As professional as this should be, I just thought that that combination of words was kind of silly. In any case, I'm sure we'll all be checking it out. And again, we'll post links to that when it comes up. Speaking of 300, go to themasonicroundtable.com slash 300 if you want to celebrate 300 years of Freemasonry with other brothers from around the country. Myself, as well as the other gents from the Masonic Roundtable, decided to put something together for all of us. Not just us, but for all of us. All the Masons in the United States who respect the legend of the 300 years of Freemasonry. And I say legend because recent evidence uh, points out that we're actually not quite 300 years old just yet. I'll talk more about that in a few moments. But uh, if you are interested in this celebration, please go to the web address again, themasonicroundtable.com slash 300, or you can go to wcypodcast.com when you're on our site and just click 300 Years of Freemasonry, and it'll take you right there where you can grab your ticket. Non-tiled event. Anybody can come as long as they have a ticket. We're going to have a festive board. We've got Mark Tabbert. We've got illustrious brother Stephen L. Harrison. We've got Mike Hambrick, John Ruark, Jason Richards, Juan Sepulveda, and myself, You know, the Masonic Roundtable guys, we're not really doing anything. This is about all of us together, and it's going to be fantastic. So can't wait to share some time with you guys. Again, check it out. Go to the web address. We'll have links again to that on the show's page. Now, what was I talking about some legend of 300 years? Well, it just so happens. You guys can check it out yourself. Dr. Charles A. Sankey 
Lecture Series in Masonic Studies, Professor Andrew Prescott, Searching for the Apple Tree, What Happened in 1716. It's a one-hour uh, YouTube documentary produced by the Grand Lodge of Canada, Brock Company as well, and it really goes through and it says where was this apple tree tavern and where were these lodges and what we find out that too long didn't watch essentially is anderson's story is that four lodges met at the apple tree in 1716 to agree on the ugle formation in 1717 on the 24th of june but the catch is that there was no apple tree tavern until the late 1720s and one of the lodges that's supposed to have been at this merger wasn't even in existence until much later so it's just not possible that said you know we celebrate this idea of 300 years of freemasonry and it actually looks like they even just grabbed all these legends and tossed them into the minute books after the fact to establish that uh, there was a little bit more antiquity or honor with the united grand lodge of england don't believe me watch the video check it out solid evidence i'll toss the uh, link up so you guys can check that out also really good lecture just this last week on the midnight freemasons of course we had a great post on monday from aaron gardner on wednesday we put up the post that we read last week from worshipful brother scott duball about blue lodge first now, if you missed that paper, please go back to last week and listen to it, uh, or just head on over to themidnightfreemasons.org and take a look. We caught a lot of flack at the Midnight Freemasons for using an image of Donald Trump in the article. It was supposed to be a funny meme. It says, Blue Lodge is the best lodge. There are no lodges better than the Blue Lodge. Just that kind of reiterating style that President Trump talks in. And it was meant to be funny, and people just gravitated toward that and accused us of putting up a picture to gain hits and all this stuff. <laughs> it was comical because my consistent response was, did you read the article? Did you read the article? And in some cases, we had guys sharing the article, like, I totally agree with this, Blue Lodge first. But that's actually just the title of the article. If you read the article, you would know that maybe it's not quite that way. So... Just a word to the wise, you know, if you're going to share an article, you should probably read it. Uh, I think we're all guilty of just reposting articles willy-nilly sometimes, uh, but do check that out. It was a great post. It was a great reading by Worship Brother Scott Duball last week. And to all the Masons out there who were really offended that we used this picture of Trump, I just got to say get over it. It was not an attempt at getting hits. We, we get a lot of hits regardless, so it's not a big deal. But to everybody out there who shared that piece and really enjoyed it, thanks so much for checking it out, and it was great. We also had an amazing piece, a continuation of the education series that illustrious brother Todd E. Creason, Midnight Freemasons founder, put up on Friday. You guys got to check it out. When he's done with the series, we'll probably do an in-depth look at those pieces. We'll read them and discuss them over the next few weeks. Again, once he's done with the series. This week, we've got a great 10 for 10 segment with Worshipful Brother Pablo from Denver Lodge in Colorado and we just had a really fantastic conversation we had the 10 questions of course one of the questions was from the previous worshipful master that we sat down with and talked with and it was just a wonderful conversation so without any further delays let's just jump right into the 10 for 10 all right everybody we are back with our next 10 for 10 with sitting worshipful masters I've got a great guest tonight who came actually recommended by one of the other gentlemen who did the 10 for 10 and comes from his home lodge. So if you would, brother, please introduce yourself, give us your name and number, and under whose jurisdiction you fall. Yeah, great. Uh, my name is Pablo Columban. I'm the Worshipful Master of 2017 for Denver Lodge number 5 in the jurisdiction of Colorado. That's so awesome. Thanks again for taking the time to do this with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So what I did allude to was one of my best friends, Scott Duball. We read one of his papers on the last week's episode, and he was one of our sitting worship masters, our first one, in fact. He holds your lodge in such high esteem. <laughs> um, I mean, if you could hear him talk about it, I mean, he glows when he talks about it. It's pretty awesome. Oh, that's good. But, uh, that's good to hear. Yeah. So without any further ado, we're just going to dive right into these questions. So number one, what is the strongest part about Colorado masonry? Oh, wow. I guess right off the top of my head, I'd say we have such a, a large resource 
as far as Masonic education is concerned, we have a huge pool to choose from um, as far as speakers. Some of them are a little bit more famous than others, uh, accomplished writers. Some that come to mind are Right Worshipful Brother, Kevin Townley. We have um, Ben Williams, who is the uh, publisher of the Rocky Mountain Mason magazine, is another one that comes to mind. I, so I think that's probably one of our, our strong suits, I'd say. That's great. Uh, ben Williams, I'm, I'm really familiar with uh, some of his works. We've had some correspondence in the past. And uh, yeah, I mean, what a tremendous, I guess I would say, pool of talent you guys have out there. It's really cool. Yeah, having conversations with Ben and Worshipful Brother Townley can be amazing. And just sitting down and having a beer with Ben is, is some of the most uh, Masonic fun I've had throughout my career here. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, all right, number two. What is the worst part about your lodge? So it's a hard question. Some guys don't yeah. want to go there, but we all have something that we wish was a little better. And worst doesn't mean this sucks so bad, like it it negates everything we do. Worst means it could be something totally insignificant. It's just the one thing that you wish was a little better. Yeah, hmm. that's that's a hard one. You might have to edit out some of the dramatic silence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the—I wouldn't say it's the worst per se. It's part, its one of our kind of our the things that we we wear with pride to a certain extent. But it's also one of the things that I find to be difficult. This being my year as master, is we uh, we don't recycle masters, meaning that you know once you, we're kind of a, a one and done worshipful master over here. So I'll never be able to be master again. And there just doesn't seem to be enough time to get everything done that, I, that I'd that i like to get done, if that makes sense. Definitely. Yeah, I think a lot of guys feel you. But again, you know, it's, it's you know, it says a lot that, you know, we, we don't have to recycle masters. You know, we have a lot of young, willing guys that work hard and uh, are able to step up, step up to the plate. I know, you know, a lot of lodges aren't blessed to have that opportunity. That is a, a true statement. So kudos to you guys. <laughs> Number three. It's a kind of a three-part question. What is the future of masonry? Would you do you see co-masonry happening, uh, or do you see we us turning into just a charitable board? Where do you see the future of Freemasonry? Uh, wow. I mean, I guess it de- you know it depends on the willingness of of the individual lodges to uh, not want to become obsolete or antiquated or, or rest on their laurels, you know, saying, oh, you know, we're the oldest and the largest fraternity in the world. And that's it. You know, we have to we have to be able to constantly be adjusting to the paradigm shifts that, that obviously happen throughout time. You know, one of the things that we had been talking about earlier before we were recording, as far as just being up to date is with technology and, and uh, the Internet and social media, just using these tools to streamline communications are so important that I think, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the lodges that don't keep up are going to, are going to fall under with those specifics. You know, do I see us becoming embracing co-masonry? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. There are certainly avenues that for that, but I don't think that the fraternity, you know, Freemasonry specifically as a fraternity would, would benefit from that. And as far as becoming a charitable board, I hope not think that the charity side of it i think you know i'm not the first to say this obviously that's it's a byproduct of masonry so i don't think that that's something that that we should necessarily strive for yeah definitely i think the last point that you say charity is a byproduct of masonry i love that what made you decide that being worshipful master would be a good idea (laughs) um the easy answer is, you know, I was the next guy in the progressive line. So, you know, obviously there's more to it than that. I guess I was thinking about this not that long ago, and I, and I would have to say my two boys, they're young, three and five, but I'd like to feel that I, I'm a part of continuing this thing of ours. Not to say that if I didn't do it, that the next guy behind me wouldn't have done it or have done it better or more efficiently, but I'd like to be a part of that to be able to say that I kept this thing growing for, you know, for the, for both of them, 18, 20 years, uh, if they choose to join that they'll know that, you know, that this is something that I in part did have uh, some small part anyway, in keeping this alive for them. That's really interesting that you, t- you, you touch on that. You said you had two boys or three? Two. Yeah. I've got a few sons myself and it's the same thing. I uh, feel like I want this to be there if they want to do it. Like I, right. I, I would hate for them to say, man, dad, I, I wish, I wish Freemasonry was still a thing because I would have liked to have done that. Right. I don't want to be like, well, <laughs> it's, it's too late. Sorry, pal. 
<laughs> we, we, we done messed up. Uh, so, yeah, I'm with you on that. I think that's great. Next question is, would you say, is Freemasonry refining? Is it dying? Is it just shifting? And what is your reasoning behind your belief? Hmm. I'm going to say both refining and shifting, mostly just because I'd hate to say that it's dying. I don't think it's dying. I don't think it will die. I think that, that there are enough lodges that are that are trying, that are seeing the change happening. Again, like I said, the paradigm shift uh, and are jumping on board with that. So dying, I don't think it, it, it'll happen. I like the word refining. <laughs> and, you know, it, there's obviously been a huge change in numbers. Uh, a huge decline per se, but I think the quality over quantity has greatly improved the fraternity, at least in our lodge anyway. The ritual work and the degree work is outstanding. And, and you know, we, you know, we're held to a kind of a high regard in those terms. So yeah, I, I think we're, we're refining it little by little. Awesome. Number six, tell me about a mentor who changed your life. Oh, mentor that changed my life. I would have to say that my father, who wasn't a Mason, obviously had a huge impact on me on who I am and my ideals and my morals, first and foremost. Again, he wasn't a Mason, but I'd like to think that maybe if he was a, a younger guy in a different generation that he, he may have found the craft and that I think it's something that he would have enjoyed. That being said, I mean, I have a lot of Masonic mentors at Lodge you know, past masters that, that who uh, who have come before me and given me great advice, which may not necessarily have changed my life, but they it has changed my my outlook on life and the lodge and, and what I'm doing as a worshipful master. One in particular would be our treasurer, past grandmaster Claude Dutro. Before my very first meeting as as worshipful master. I, we were kind of outside the lodge room as everybody was filing in. He could see that I was probably turning green and a bit nervous. And uh, he, he said, look in there. There's not one person in there that wants you to fail. Everybody there wants you to succeed and they're going to help you succeed. That made a huge impact on me. And and I think for the best, it, it does impact me as far as how I deal with everybody and, and talk to people and, and communicate you know, coming up with different programs and, and whatnot at Lodge. It never ceases to amaze me just who can say, you know, two words to us. A lot of times, like in my own time, there are these guys who just never talk to me at all. And then they'll come out with some gem right when I need it. And I'm like, right. <laughs> you know what? If you've been saving it up till now for that, thank you. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, no, it's very true. And it's one of those things, you know, with, uh, it's hard to pick one person. You know, there's so many True. within the lodge that, that are willing to help out and give you advice and sometimes good, some, sometimes negative, but in the end, it's, it's, all, it's all for the better. So the next question I have for you, I'm going to ask you for your favorite Masonic book and why. But being as this is a digital age and we are moving, there's a lot of resources out there. So if book doesn't work for you interchange that with resource so it could be a blog it could be whatever what's your favorite masonic book why and if you need to replace book go ahead oh wow well i, I mean I, I do obviously i spend a lot of time on on the blogs and your podcast <laughs> uh you know what it's funny because i was just having this conversation with uh, another recent past master at our lodge and it's one of the most difficult things that, while being master is that I have a pile of books yep. that are just stacking up that I'm like, okay, I'll get to it after I'm done. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, you know, I, I guess I, I'll say just purely because he was a, a member of our lodge and um, it's uh, Restorations of Masonic Geometry and Symbolry by uh, Worshipful Brother Bromwell. And it's been since reproduced by um, our Worshipful Brother Kevin Townley. Uh, he was, like I said, a member of Denver Lodge Number Five, and uh, very esteemed. It's, it's, and it's a book that we are actually thanks to Worshipful Brother Townley. He donated a bunch of these books to the lodge. We're giving them as gifts to the brethren when they're when they're finally raised. So I, I guess I would have to say that, mostly for uh, pride reasons, I guess. <laughs> sure. Well, you know that that book actually is. Uh, I'm not sure if if the brothers of your lodge are aware. 
But that book is revered coast to coast. It has quite the reputation. So uh, to give that book to your your new Master Masons, super generous. And I hope those, uh, those new Master Masons realize what they have because that tome specifically, like I said, a lot of weight across the nation. It's really cool. Well, yeah, it's a huge book. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I, mean, I believe he was a member in Illinois as well mistaken that i do not know <laughs> i can't I, we just did a a, um, a story on him in the rocky mountain mason i'll have um, to check that out yeah i believe he i believe he was actually raised in illinois but i might be off by a state or two video degrees help or hindrance uh actually i have no idea what that is <laughs> what? So, i guess uh it, it doesn't help at me at all <laughs> all right so uh, I'll give you just a quick preface. In some states, I feel, I believe there's only one state currently that does this, but they actually have next to nobody who can do degree work, the lectures. So they video them, and the candidate gets them on video. And wow. in the northern jurisdiction of the Scottish Rite, 4th through 32nd and an honorary 33rd degree, many of the degrees are now videos rather than actual live plays. There's been a yeah. lot. Of, there's been a lot of debate on that, uh, mostly to the negative. But uh, I thought maybe I would ask you. But since you don't even know about it, then yeah, that hasn't really crossed our state, as far as I know. Maybe you know, maybe on the Grand Lodge level, you know, somebody had brought it up. But I think that completely misses the point of what we do. All right. Our, our, <laughs> our, our, our ritual is so it's such a visceral thing that needs to be experienced. I can't imagine that coming across in any way i mean maybe one day we we can tap into the virtual reality game but uh i just don't see that i love the fact that you didn't even know about it that's so awesome to me (laughs) so that's cool i'm with you 100 percent. all right kind of a fun question before we get to our last question you can sit down and eat pancakes with any mason in history who is it and what do you ask them huh I'm kind of a, a history buff guy, and that, that's initially what had interests me in Freemasonry is because I was into specifically the American Revolution. So I guess I would like to sit down with all of the, of the Masonic founding fathers, but I guess if I had to just pick one, maybe I'd sit down with uh, George Washington, I guess, and pick his brain a little bit and ask him how much of, of the rumors about the Bible and, and his inauguration, how much of that is true. And then I'd hope, you know, kind of like asking a genie for more wishes i'd ask him for some more questions <laughs> for sure for sure cool man so i'm gonna go ahead and give you the question from uh, brother rj hughes who, who was our last uh, sitting worshipful master and he says most leaders want to make their mark on freemasonry by the time they leave office something for them to look back on to point and say hey i did that do you want a specific legacy as worshipful master of your lodge? And if so, what do you want it to be? If not, why not? Yeah, definitely. I mean, my wife would be the first to tell you that I'm full of myself, so I definitely would love to see some sort of legacy. And mostly just because I, I feel like programs that, that I've initiated for this year are things that are worthwhile and, and I think will improve the lodge. I made a huge push as far as uh, streamlining communications i relaunched the website so it's a responsive website which we didn't have before i've been making a huge push on social media um, you know signing a committee and utilizing email marketing services and event management services so on that side i hope that this is something that continues on i think it's necessary for us to grow and even maintain and i guess i'm being way more vague than you wanted one one thing but also, you know, we've started a lot of fellowship activities like a, a rod and gun club, which I hope will continue to grow throughout the years. I guess if I had to pick one, it would be the communication side of it, just because I think that's the most important. Hopefully, the the fellowship activities and the, the fishing and shooting and the golfing plant root. So, yeah, I think those would be the ones that I, I hope grow. You know, bringing up again our past grandmaster, who is our treasurer, he mentioned to me out of from the year that he was Grand Master, which was in 2003, I believe, of all the programs that he had put in place during his year, not one of them is to be, being implemented today. Wow. 
and uh, and he didn't necessarily mean that from a negative point or, or anything like that, but just to, just more of a, a reminder, like, hey, you know, don't be too hurt if yeah. you don't see this continue on. <laughs> sure. Well, I think what you've done as far as communications is so key. There is something to be said that, you know, I've talked to hundreds of brothers about lodge websites, but it's like 10 or 12 guys told me the only reason they picked their lodge over a different one was because one lodge had a website, the other one didn't. And some guys picked a lodge that was a little farther away because they also had a Facebook page that showed them doing things every week. So in a way, it's almost like without proper communications, you almost lose your validity. And so it adds to the credibility of your lodge. Uh, you know, without, without these communications and without using services like Eventbrite or using MailChimp, like without those things, there's just like an element of almost non-professionalism. I took over as secretary a year and a half, two years ago, and I went to a MailChimp service. And the reason I did that was simply because not everybody wants an email with 300 email address forwards at the top. Right. Uh, I just think it looks unprofessional, it looks messy, and are guys going to scroll past the names or are they just going to delete it? And that's if they even get it. Exactly. Emails like that tend to get pushed right into your spam box if even sent at all. That well, is I agree one hundred percent. And and that was to your point, you know, that was one of the things that led me to my lodge is they were the only ones that had a Facebook page and they had they actually used it and had pictures of, of their members so I can see them doing things and that they were young and put a face to it so it wasn't as intimidating. And uh and even now as as master and, and I'm trying to plan visits to the to other lodges in the areas to promote, you know, the fraternity and promote fellowship. And you'd be blown away at how hard it is to get somebody to, to answer me or, or, or even to go on there. I you know, it'd be as easy as just going on their website and seeing when they meet and sometimes that proves to be too difficult. Yep. I've heard people argue, Oh, well, you know, we didn't receive that, you know, communication by physical mail. So it's it's not it's it's been voided. <laughs> we don't have an email address. Like, I mean, we're, <laughs> you're failing, you know, and nowadays, you know, if, if you're not on the internet, if you don't have a website, if you're not participating on social media, if you don't have email, I mean, you're, you're failing. I mean, essentially, I know this is going to be a little bit controversial, but essentially we're, we're, we're business more or less. Yep. Uh, or an organization and organization nowadays that, you know, that isn't with the times, it's just doomed to fail. And uh, the, the time of having that cute little website with the silly little dingbats or the cheesy graphics, we need to move past that, try to try to appeal to our target audience. Yeah, you're not going to get anybody with GeoCities websites. Right. Yeah. Worshipful Brother Pablo, I can't thank you enough for coming on the, the show and uh, giving us some great insights into Colorado Masonry, specifically Denver Five. It's just so cool to have you on. I really can't thank you enough. Hey, I really appreciate the time and, and thank you for, for asking me to do this. It's been fun and I've enjoyed uh, hearing the other Worshipful Masters do their questions and, and I've definitely gotten a lot of insight from it. Cool, man. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, I hope you enjoyed the 10 for 10 with Worshipful Brother Pablo. We'll have links to his Lodge's website and some more information about Colorado Masonry in the show notes. Be sure to check that out. And before we close it out for this week, I'll go ahead and give you one piece that uh, I did for the Midnight Freemasons just a few weeks back. And it's called, Why Are You Going to the Meeting Again? by Midnight Freemason contributor Robert H. Johnson. If you don't have to do a part in the degree, why are you going again? That's a question someone recently asked me, and actually, it was my wife. We were walking up the stairs as I was telling her my schedule for the week. I have nothing on Monday or Tuesday, but Wednesday, I have to do an official visit. Thursday, I have Scottish Rite rehearsal. Friday, I have another official visit to conduct. And Saturday, at 8.30 in the morning, I need to be at a lodge for two second degrees. With all that going on, I can see where she was coming from. We are all so busy. And it seems like, at a point, if you don't have to be somewhere, then sit back and take a break. This is undoubtedly what she was thinking. But then she asked me that question. If I don't have a job to do, why go? My answer was simply, because these guys are friends. My wife understood at that point. She knew that these two guys were the ones Brother Scott and I thought, quote-unquote, actually get masonry. But it got me thinking. 
how many brothers feel this way? How many of you all feel that if you don't have a part, you don't have to go? While I feel this is never true, I can understand the reasoning if it's a stated meeting to a point. But for a degree, everyone has a part, even the sideliner, which is what I was that day. At my first degree, there were 13 people present, including officers. At my second degree, there were 14, and at my third degree, 15. 15 is a decent turnout these days, but for a lodge with 300 on the books, I guess it's sad. I'm really not sure what to say at this point, but perhaps I will just leave you with a statement and then a quote. Don't assume other people will do it, or that other people will show up. Don't think you won't be missed, or that it's okay to miss the meeting. It isn't. Not in a time like this. Even if you don't have a job or a part, be there. As for the quote, Brother Eric Diamond, he said, simply, go to Lodge. That's it this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed the program. I hope you're enjoying the 10 for 10. We're back on with those. We're going to have Frotter O on here in the next couple weeks. If not, maybe even next week. I've got some time scheduled, hopefully soon, with Brother John Ruark. Of course, we were dark on the Masonic Roundtable this week, so no episode there. And speaking of the Masonic Roundtable, if you like Masonic podcasts and uh, Masonic education, feel free to check out MasonicRoundtable.com and uh, check us out on Google Hangouts or YouTube where we go live every Tuesday night at 10, 9 central, except when we have some uh, circumstances. So this last week, we, of course, were dark, as we say, and it was kind of a nice break. But uh, we are going to be back on next week, so please check out that show every Tuesday again, 10, 9 central. The Midnight Freemasons over at midnightfreemasons.org. Three articles every single week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're not. You know, it's a group of Master Masons that talk about topics of Masonic interest in general. Now, we each have our own unique perspective and there's a wide range of subjects history trivia travel book reviews great quotes and some humor and of course it's not just a blog for freemasons it's also out there for those interested in the subject of freemasonry so again check it out uh, brother aaron gardner has made a second coming as it were on the midnight freemasons he was gone for a while he was writing some books and things and now he's back so check it out we'll be back again next week so until then Stay on the level. For whence came you, I'm Robert Johnson. You've been listening to Whence Came You, a Masonic podcast featuring research papers and discussions related to Freemasonry with your host, Brother Robert Johnson. Be sure to join us for our next edition.